what I now wanted to talk about is looking at formulas and uh, taking a look at other types of uh, features and formulas that, that might be concerning, but also maybe just in general, you know, as much as I'm saying formulas now, but before we talked a little bit about how to look at data itself and, and how to audit that data and a few tools that are in Excel that can kind of help you audit the data. What I wanted to talk more now about is a bit of a process for auditing Excel spreadsheets which does include the data, I have to admit, but, but I think a lot of it tends to fall more on the formula and nested if formulas and uh, things that are a little more concerning uh, with formulas. So let's continue through this. You know, how do we calculate risk? And, you know, this is something that we'll do a little bit later in an automated tool that we have, but what we generally find is that you're looking for significance and likelihood. And significance would be, you know, how important is the spreadsheet to the entire function? Is it just a, a, a high-level spreadsheet that's barely ever used? Is it more of a summary one? Or, or is it one that ends up uh, being the basis of a journal entry? Uh, you know, if it's more of the journal entry type, you probably want to spend more time auditing it. Uh, I think that's based more on, you know, what stakeholders' interest is. and then from a likelihood uh, factor, we want to look at complexity within the spreadsheets. And I, I think later today, you know, when, when Sam talks about Incisive's uh, product, I think it does a great job of highlighting a lot of these, like, potential weird things that can go wrong in spreadsheets. And again, I, I think it's hard to look at a data sheet and automatically know these cells are wrong. You know, just, you know, that, that one's above average, so therefore it's wrong. Uh, it doesn't mean it's wrong, it's just above average. But, you know, again, I think it's good to look at that. I think complexity comes in when you start looking more at the formulas and, and the way you've built that spreadsheet and how you're linking things together. Um, so let's take a look at some of these complexity factors. Just bear with me one second here. So w what we're kind of looking at is the error patterns. Uh, and I base this a lot on that usprig.org website and taking a look uh, at presentations, at, you know, what went wrong in a lot of the case studies, and really try to understand, you know, what, what can go wrong. And, and some of the things such as uh, business rules that are just not understood in the, the Excel spreadsheet, it's kind of hard to know what that is. I mean, I think that's something where auditors need to sit down and really look at the ultimate spreadsheet and, and say, is it meeting the needs? Uh, estimates that are not updated, again, there might be a cell that you're supposed to update every month with the new interest rate, and if that's not updated, you know, you're in trouble. Uh, I suppose you could auto-link to a website to do that, um, but, uh, that, you know, it's still something that, that came up. Incomplete data, you know, I think doing things like we showed before of, of adding up the data, uh, doing totals and averages and tying that out to the, the, uh, the actual books and records would be a really good idea. Um, I think the wrong signs in the data uh, as well. A lot of times you'll copy data over and mistakenly forget the sign. Rounding errors where we, we just show you how you can look for round numbers. Uh, but there might be some rounding errors that over time will calculate out incorrectly. Um, so you, you could look at that as well. And I think that's a lot of this data auditing that we just talked about, you know, summarizing and that kind of thing. Then, uh, now we get into kind of incorrect formulas, improper ranges that are set, and incorrect cell references. So you're linking to a cell that, you know, moved or doesn't exist anymore, and it's, it's, it's creating a, a bit of an error in your spreadsheet. So, uh, you know, I, I think that when you look at a spreadsheet as well, and this is something we'll talk a little bit later about in, in this tool set that we have, but, you know, these are the things that I think lead to more complexity in a spreadsheet. So, you know, once you've decided this is a spreadsheet that I think has complexity in it, we need to think about formulas and nested if formulas and, pop, you know, how many of, of the cells are populated, how many of them are blank within the data, which, you know, again, might be a bit of an error to show how many blank cells you have in your data. Uh, cells with formula errors, uh, the NA that we just talked about, that would be a formula error in, in Excel's words uh, or, or in its, its thinking. So uh, these are things that you, you can kind of take a look for. 
text fields that should be numeric, like we just talked about, or numeric fields that should be text. Um, hidden worksheets and cells, I mean, a lot of times we hide columns and rows, and it makes it a lot easier to see things, but then if somebody's auditing it, they don't see the column that, you know, is driving that calculation. And, and then external links as well. These are all things that, as I'm looking at the, the error patterns, these are the, when I think of actual tangible things that I can put my, my hands on, th these are more tangible things that, that we can kind of work with and, and uh, you know, talk about. Okay, so I, you know, I have another slide here. I think I may just copy over this uh, for right now. Um, it, it just talks quickly about the process. You can you know, look at it uh, later in your own uh, uh, way, but I, I think it's more or less you know, assessing significance and then testing for the likelihood of error, and, and that's where we're going to talk about a few things we can do. Uh, you know, a, as we said, you could look at your spreadsheet in 10% zoom and you know, use the data bars and data filters and, and all those things that we talked about from a data point of view. I mean, we have a whole course on pivot tables, and I would urge you to, you know, I, I constantly take data and just pivot table it just to see, you know, is it something that, uh, you know, it, it has information in there that, that uh, is concerning. Viewing spreadsheets side by side, uh, this is something where what I find is a very useful thing. We'll show you in Excel, but, but I find we constantly are taking a look at two different uh, uh, spreadsheets and trying to map out, you know, how different is one to another. Um, and, you know, to that end, I find validating with speech is, is a great thing that you can do. And we'll, we'll try to do that, but I, I don't think anyone's going to be able to hear it today, unfortunately. But uh, it is something where you can try to validate with speech. Um, what uh, we'll also show you is how you can actually find uh, you know, this as well, which uh, I believe is talked about in the next slide here, uh, so we'll, we'll show that, but yeah, text-to-speech. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the quick access bar, uh, toolbar, where you can get text-to-speech, um, but it is something where, uh, you know, it, I think it's a great feature, and what, what that'll do is essentially take numbers, and even though it's a bit of a computer speak that you have to listen to, it will talk the numbers out to you. So you, instead of having you to look at one another, it'll actually read out, you know, $100, $150, $250, and you can look at your spreadsheet and just go down that list one by one and check things off. And for those that have been around a long time, uh, like myself, I, you know, find, I remember these days where we would sit in a room and one person would read out the numbers and one person would tick them off on a spreadsheet. Um, and it, it's something where this allows you to do that. And again, I'll, I'll flip over that slide because I, I think it's a little less useful, but, but hopefully if you can't find things, as we'll show you in a second, you, you can always go back to that slide. In the view to formulas, uh, we'll show you by just selecting your control and backward, um, it, it's actually a tilde mark on your keyboard. Uh, if you, you know, basically select tools in the tilde mark, uh, or control, excuse me, control in the tilde mark, it will um, basically allow you to see all your full uh, functions. Uh, another option is is kind of going into uh, tools and options and, and selecting, you know, show formulas, which we'll, we'll talk about uh, in a second. Um, in the, and then uh, you can also select formulas from the newer versions of Excel and select show formulas. So a lot of different ways that uh, we can do that. And, and this kind of brings us into the Excel auditing features. So the Excel auditing features here, which you can kind of see back here. So back on this slide, uh, you have trace precedence, trace dependence, remove arrows, show, show formulas, error checking, uh, all of which is uh, listed out here and something that uh, you, know, you, you can take a look at. So bear with me one second. Um, okay, so with all this, I wanted to go through, you know, how do we take a look at uh, some of the uh, formula points. Let me, uh, let me just actually go a couple more here. We have the evaluate formula, which is another example of something that uh, you can utilize the Excel toolbar for, and then you can find formula errors by going to find and select, go to special, and looking for errors. And we're going to go through all of this in Excel, but I, I just wanted to show you where it is in the slides before we jumped into Excel and started uh, moving all over the place. 
Uh, last but not least on that list is looking for plug issues. So uh, this is where you're actually looking for uh, a, a negative or positive sign. And I'm pretty sure that Incisive does a nice job at highlighting these as well for you. Let me start off with what we talked about initially, which is text-to-speech. And, you know, it's kind of hard to, to you know, have this sound out over the uh, presentation. Uh, but uh, what we should be able to do is select more commands. And I'm actually having a little trouble finding it. Normally it's right here. Of course, it's set up on my other computer, although I am having a little trouble finding it here. Hold on one second. I have to go back to my own slides uh, to find it. Normally it, it's, I thought it's, oh, maybe it's up here on the proofing side. Nope. Sorry about that. Maybe I just need to go to all commands, actually. Commands not in the ribbon. Huh. Well, I, you know, I, I always stump myself a little bit here, and on my other computer I have this set up, so I thought that this would be easy to set up, but I'm obviously finding it be a bit hard to set up here. Uh, we, we select uh, more commands, which I unfortunately don't have here, so I'll, I'll select all commands, and uh, then uh, scrolling down, we'll look for speak cells, which hopefully is down here a little bit. And if it's not, I will move on because I don't want to waste it. Yep, there it is. There it is. Okay, so good. Um, so you, you have speak cells. I would probably just bring that one over. We'll add that. So just have that one. I think that'll be fine. And I, I, you'll have to take my word for it here, but if I highlight these numbers and hit the speak cells, I don't... Yeah, unfortunately, you're not, not able to hear it, but notice how it's going through the actual uh, uh, you know listing here and sorry I'll just let it finish here so what it did was every cell that I highlighted I was able to then select that uh, in speak cells in the toolbar there um, and what it will do is allow you to uh, speak out each one of those and it does it in a pretty nice pace too I mean it's almost like as good as someone would be able to to say it uh, and I think there are some other options in there as well. I don't want to belabor this, but uh, where you can pause it and, you know, if you, you need to go take a break from them talking to you. Um, but uh, anyway, that, that is one way to, to do it. Uh, okay, so, you know, another thing is as you look at data like we're looking at here, I, I you know, just kind of noting here, yeah. So m one thing that just jumped, I mean, there's so many things in Excel that, that you can look for. Uh, but what I really like looking for is just sort of errors and formulas and finding formulas. Well, there's a few different ways. Uh, I mean, you could select formulas from your bar and say show formulas. So again, imagine, look at all your data here. You say show formulas and go, wait a second, I have a formula in my data. So it's actually summing up four to six to get me that cell. Um, you might have noticed, though, that that actually had this green kind of, you know, doohickey up here in the left-hand uh, corner. And uh, that uh, green mark uh, basically uh, highlighted the fact that we had uh, a, a, a difference in that column. And uh, I'm just kind of curious what that error says, but it basically says uh, formula omits adjacent cells. Let's, let's see here. The formula in the cell reference refers to a range that has additional numbers adjacent to it. So, yeah, it's just, it's all these different, uh, yeah, so it omits adjacent cells. Uh, what I find is it just finds a lot of these weird things. When we take a look at this one, it's probably the number is, is formatted as is text and preceded by an apostrophe, which it considers to be an error. But because it's an invoice number, I'm not really considering that an error. I think that's actually a good thing to, to have that apostrophe in there, as we, we talked about before. Um, so what, what this is kind of getting to is the, uh, you know, the, the kind of go-to special 
uh, taking a look at the errors that you might have. Now, you can't watch me do this, but if I do the control um, uh, tilde mark, and I'll just show you, it's usually next to, well, on an English keyboard, it, it's actually towards your enter key, um, but on a, uh, on a, a US keyboard, you uh, basically it's the cell or, or the key next to the number one. So it's the tilde mark is this one here, and the mark that we're looking for is that one there, and that's kind of the, the, the regular version of it. So if you hit control, you know, tilde, I guess, um, it will bring up that show formulas feature that we just talked about before. So a lot of people use that just to kind of jump back and forth pretty quickly between formula and non-formula view. So that's that one there. Um, other things now to you know take a look into is really just the, the variety of formula uh, auditing features that, that are available that just make things a little bit uh, you know easier to look at. So I mean one option uh, we, we talked about is viewing side by side. So if you wanted to look at two spreadsheets, you just go to your view menu, view side by side. And you can set up the synchronous scrolling so you can, you know, everything scrolls at once or you can get rid of that and then, you know, move one at a time. So we, we did talk about that. Uh, I guess, you know, the, all of these types of view options like freezing panes and uh, a lot of, actually a lot of people ask me when I do this one, I'll hit like arrange all and horizontal. I only have two open, but, you know, it, it's just something that, that I find just jumping back and forth between uh, Excel sometimes is a little bit hard to do. Uh, another thing that I'll do is hit my control tab function and that'll also get you back and forth between spreadsheets. So I invariably find myself looking at two different spreadsheets and like auditing them and maybe looking at last month and this month and, and trying to look for differences. Uh, so th these are things that hopefully are helpful to you as you're, you're going through your, your work. Uh, now onto the formulas. I, again, in this uh, sample here, I, I have way more examples that we're going to show today, uh, but the theory being, you know, if we, we hi well, if I highlight this 2500 item and go to formulas and say trace precedence, it will trace the precedence basically and, and kind of walk through, you know, what's happening here. Um, so, you know, and it's a little odd, you know, I mean, it doesn't really show one of the kind of errors in here, in my opinion, but it, it's it's summing up B4 to uh, uh, you know to to uh, uh, E uh, sorry let me just go here B4 to E10 is being selected, but it's also notice it's throwing that direct plus B4 down there. So if I get rid of that plus B4, could be wrong about this, but and then uh, say trace precedent. Ah, see, it, it still kind of throws it in there, and I, I thought it did actually, because that, that's why I said it, it. It almost like didn't really show that plus B four, which I really like, uh, the plus symbol. So, you know, some of the things that uh, I I will do invariably when I'm looking at spreadsheets is, even though trace precedent is kind of useful, and you can kind of see where where you know where stuff coming from. Um, what you can also do is do a control find and say, what do I want to find? I want to find my plus symbols and say, find the next one. And, you know, again, there's only one in the spreadsheet, but it allows you to just quickly jump to a particular cell where you might have a sum plus something. So that, that's what's happening there. Let's go through the other examples. This one, I think this one's a circular reference, so it, it kind of, I think it automatically, uh, you know, didn't like it, but let's, uh, let me just uh, add on to it, maybe this guy over here, let's see if, yeah, that'll allow that. So, uh, you know, and, and taking a look at here, I mean, one of the things you could do is, if you knew this was your total line down below here, okay, you can say trust precedent, okay, it looks good, you know, trace the next one, sorry, next one. And, you know, now we're starting to see a difference here, right, I mean, where you see it's not only uh, a sort of downward, but also uh, coming over from the left-hand side. And uh, trace precedence here. So again, that, that looked pretty good. Let me just, for fun, let me just kind of trace precedence on that one as well. And that, you know, is, is kind of also interesting is that it, it's also uh, showing me that everything seems to, to be copacetic and matching over. Now again, I, I think if I put in here, actually, yeah, 
So these are some values here. If I let me just highlight all of these, trace precedence. So notice here for these last three, bear with me, the trace precedence command requires a formula. So you, you now notice, oh, that's a hard-coded number that somebody put in there as opposed to, uh, let me do that again, oh, there we go. So this found the hard-coded number in the sea of formulas here. <laughs> um, so, you know, again, it's something where utilizing these features is kind of interesting. It takes a little getting used to. Uh, I mean, I still feel this is a little confusing, how that set itself up and said, yeah, that's going to here. But I also, you know, if I get rid of that before and redo that again, it, it you know, still kind of seems to throw that in there, which is a little annoying, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and other things that, uh, you know, we could quickly look through here. I'm just trying to think of what other examples might be useful for you. Uh, we, we did show this one here, that this was more of a sum based on that, which is kind of good. Just quickly go through here. Uh, this is more of a conditional formatting. This, the approach here on the conditional formatting, use it if you'd like to is you can obviously kind of set numbers to be more of a white font and therefore it will, you know, like gray itself out so you won't see it. So the white font would occur, uh, let's say, if it's under a certain value. And then that way only the big values, let's say, would show up on your spreadsheet. And that, that might be something that also is kind of interesting and, and useful to you as well. Uh, so again, I think we've pretty much gone through all of the items and the, the last couple that I, I think I wanted to show you uh, was in the uh, find option here. Let me just uh, bear with me one second. So uh, let's, uh, let me see if I even have any. If I go to find and select, so this is over here, um, you have a variety of, of options. I mean, some of the things that I find is useful is just finding and selecting comments and there were none, so that, that's okay. But maybe go to special and, oops, oh, oh, sorry. So we can hit the go to button, we can hit the special, and at that point you could say formulas that you want to go to, and maybe you just want to look at errors within the formulas. So you can highlight down to that. No cells were found. I wish I could, uh, I, I think I had that error in a formula from before just to, uh, j just to show a potential error in a formula. Let's see if I can find any more here that uh, would be useful for you. Uh, but uh, with that said, it will find the errors in formulas, which is quite nice. And again, it's uh, in the formulas go to special. Uh, you can select quite a bit of uh, potential options here. Uh, I also like looking for comments in a spreadsheet because you never really know if somebody, you know, let's, uh, in, in your review menu, you can add a comment here and uh, just type something like that. Uh, but uh, in now my find and select, uh, we can go to special and uh, in our comments here, kind of select that first one. And it allows you to go around the spreadsheet and identify, let's say, all of the comments that might be there. I'm pretty sure you can highlight everything as well and say show all comments like that as well. And then kind of scroll down on a spreadsheet and look for all the yellow boxes. So you know, by clicking the review menu, show all comments, that's another way of kind of getting to your comments. So uh, there's 50 ways to skin a cat in, in Excel. Um, but, uh, you know, again, th this might be something that uh, is useful for you. Um, I also, as I said before, in my find uh, all and, and that kind of thing, just looking at a spreadsheet like this and saying I want to find my plus symbols. Um, you know, oh, isn't that interesting? In my sea of data, I do have that plus 84 in there. So again, something else that, that you might want to just kind of, in highlighting, uh, be able to kind of quickly select items that are in there as well.